It feels like burning. My husband would be like putting her in the bath, putting her in the sink all through the night. We'd be using cold flannels. She wouldn't want skin and any clothes touching her. Just a scratch on the skin feels like knives scraping against your skin. It feels like a deep cut. The pain is often described as being like having boiling oil poured over the skin. It's the most intense pain I've ever experienced and it lasts for three days. My name is Bob Sarkany. I'm a dermatologist uh, and I uh, run the um, uh, Porphyria service at uh, Guy's Hospital, particularly for people with EPP and some other types of porphyria for the last 15, 20 years. My name's Natasha and I have two children with EPP. My daughter is 11 and my son's nine and they were diagnosed when they were four and two. My name's Andrew Morrison and my son has EPP. Um, I'm Rosemary Morrison and I'm the mother of a 20 year old boy, man with EPP. I am Samuel Morrison and I have EPP. EPP is an inherited disease uh, which results in uh, severe pain, attacks of severe pain for three to four days uh, after sun exposure in the spring and summer. You can't sleep. Well, you can eventually, but the only way you can sleep is just by entertaining yourself until you have to fall asleep. The severity of the attacks is such that one patient told me uh, when I, I saw him actually at, a, at a, a social occasion, an adult patient, and his leg was in plaster. He'd fallen and he'd broken the, the main big bone at the top of his leg, the femur. Uh, he had a big fracture, he had a pin put in, uh, and he said that the pain from when he broke that, that big bone in his leg was less than the pain that he gets from a normal attack of EPP. I think the fear of a reaction for an EPP sufferer is way more effective and damaging than the actual reaction itself, but that's because the reaction itself is so awful. I think um, there, there are two effects. One is isolation because of being uh, excluded from any outdoor activities during the day, uh, during what can essentially eight months of the year. Uh, and that's a major thing, particularly during childhood and adolescence. When he was very little, probably about two, maybe three, not talking, so probably about two, we were on holiday in France and he started having all this kind of um, rash on his hands. And we didn't know what that was. We thought he'd been stung by nettles, but uh, in hindsight, perhaps not. The first time we really responded to it was when we were in Cornwall. He was just on the beach screaming and clawing at his hands and we didn't know why, so my husband took him to A&E. They were helpful, but they, they didn't really know why he had had this reaction. And I think the general thought was that possibly it was because he'd been burnt by the sun. There was nothing to see, the obvious. So. That was it. The other thing is that um, it's a rare disease and it's a relatively rare disease and because of that um, it, it is not known to most doctors. Dermatologists will have heard of it uh, but other doctors uh, are unlikely to have come across it or to or to or necessarily to have heard of it. I remember we took them on a family holiday when Madison was about two and a half. On the drive back to the hotel Madison just kept saying it burns, it burns kind of covered her thinking she's reacted but I blamed myself because I thought she's got sunburn because I didn't bring cream. We talked to A&E and they would say it's obviously a reaction to something that I've changed so washing up powder food and I was adamant that nothing had changed at the time. They wouldn't listen they just said it was an allergy gave her some pyritin and it kept happening so I'd take her to the emergency doctor and they'd say the same. There's uh, often nothing or very little or only very subtle changes to see on the skin, even during an attack. So I never was properly diagnosed with anything until I was 10. It was actually like a, a rash. So he diagnosed it as heat urticaria and thought it was kind of a reaction to hot weather. She had this like little spot on her knuckle and I remember like 
picking her up from school and going to hold her hand and she went mental at me. And I thought, God, she's tired and she's had, you know, over the top kids. And then it it kept happening like for the next couple of days. And I went to see my mum and I said to my mum, just look at her knuckle, it just doesn't look right. She's got like a cut and it had gone green. And my mum went, get to the doctors now. And it was a Friday and we went to the doctors and they said that infection is in her blood. It's in her hand, it's going up her arm. If you waited until Monday, she would have sepsis. That just terrifies me and that's just from the sun. That's from not wearing gloves. Not having clarity over what it is, not having recognition of what it is and knowing really what you're up against um, uh, is an upsetting experience. We ended up taking him to a private hospital where we saw a dermatologist and she kind of clicked onto it straight away and did some blood tests and urine tests and then referred us to Guy's Hospital and then it was diagnosed that it was definitely EPP. And I just remember sitting there and him saying, it's erythriotic protoporphyria, he wrote it on a piece of paper, said, put sun cream on it, make her wear a hat, this is what it is, Google it. It really quite dramatically limits activities because those are the, that, those are the seasons, that is the seven or eight you know, months per year when um, uh, when life is, at, is lived outside as much as possible, particularly um, in, in childhood and in adolescence. I would say in the summer it impacts our whole life when I'm working, even them getting home to and from school is an issue. You're worried about planning ahead for anything, any school trips, you think, oh, will he be able to go on it? Is it going to affect him? If you go out for the day, we won't be able to go on it because if he gets stuck somewhere, at the time we thought it was hot, but it turns out it was sunny, that there's nowhere to get away from it. We'd certainly be aware of what kind of day it is. And, and also, as he would say, what kind of sun it is. But you open the door and you let your kids go out and play in Madison and that is it. Can't do that. I'm really into rock climbing. It's one of my main hobbies. And obviously a large portion of rock climbing culture is centered on outdoor climbing, which is something I can't do at all. We've had incidents in Derbyshire of rock climbing outside when he's been exposed to too much sun. Any outdoor activities really that you do as a family, it's been difficult. You kind of mourn the loss of the life that you would have as a family and that the kids would have. Obviously as a parent you want your child to be able to do anything, so anything that stops them from doing things they want to do is a shame. Sometimes you feel like you're letting people down by not being able to do something with them, which is really, really upsetting sometimes. We have changed our holiday patterns. Um, going on the beach, we won't go on sand now, he doesn't like sand. I think probably because of things like that episode in Cornwall, it's created like a phobia because at the time we actually thought he might be allergic to sand, that there might be something in the sand that was reacting with his skin. So we avoided sand as well. I do feel like I let them down sometimes by not being able to do that with them. And so they've always had to cater our holidays to make sure I, I will be safe. We live in the same community that I've grown up in and I wanted my kids to, to be involved in the same things I did. Greater awareness of a disease is always good, particularly a disease which can be, um, can be invisible or virtually invisible to people who are, who, are look, who are looking at it. Awareness is so important to get doctors to think porphyria. I think it would have helped because obviously we would have known what we were up against. But I think it'd help if more people understood it. I think the most people can do is trust that I know how to deal with it and I know what's best for me. Sometimes people just suggest things and say, oh, it's not that big a deal, just wear a pair of gloves. And it's really not that simple. People don't really take it into account. So for instance, on a sports day outside at school, uh, people wouldn't be aware to bring my son inside. But it takes a while to get there. It's not a case of you get diagnosed, you get pinpointed in the right direction. You may not have heard of it, and you know you you, you may not it, you know you may not be seeing much on me. But this is a serious condition that's serious enough that uh, there are specialist centres and that there are you know uh, pharmaceutical companies working on on treatments. And uh, this is this is serious. Mm -hmm.